All right, this is your brother Aisha Yar coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is true from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth with their truth and sincerity. And shalom to the Akwath that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled, A Warning from Jesus Will Get You Destroyed. <laughs> now, uh, I got inspired to do this video because this random video popped up on my YouTube timeline. And uh, I was like, you know, I just clicked on it just to see what she had to say because the name of her channel. Here, let me turn it this way so you can see. Uh, here it is. The name of her channel is Letters to the Elect. <laughs> And then this video popped up. It says, warning from Jesus, number one, will you be kicked out? The mark of the beast is here. Now, you know, uh, pretty much what I'm going to do is, before I even begin to speak, I'm just going to play this video. It's like five minutes. If I decide to cut it short, I'll cut it short through the spirit. But, uh, you know, just listen to what she got to say. She's not saying nothing important because evidently she doesn't know what these scriptures are really talking about and everything like that or whatever but you know just from the the faults that she said within this video i just want to bring out edification on the correct way the correct way of what these scriptures are talking about so let's uh listen to this a little bit and let's see what's going on hey guys so um i've been supposing to do this video but all i have is my cell phone and um i've got to make it short um i'm supposed to do this video about a lot of people that think they belong to the Lord and that they're going to be raptured or they're going to be um, making it into the kingdom, but they're not because they're not a part of that kingdom right now, but they think they are. Um, and this really isn't to the elect because the elect are going to know this, um, but maybe there are some deceived that are going to be elect still. Um, so let me... Wrong. It says the, in the scriptures that the elect will not be deceived. You cannot deceive the very elect. All right. Uh, uh, unless he's talking about people who's quote unquote in the world and then they come out of the world and then they be they repent and be converted. But other than that, the scriptures say that the elect will not be deceived by the word, man. All right. So let's continue. God has given us a lot of warnings through his word. And a lot of times we like to not heed them or listen to people that have you know heaped up preachers and teachers in these days that tell us what our itching ears want to hear anyway i'm in matthew uh 22 and that's right the itchy it, the here's some about itchy ears and these pastors that tell each other or tell their flock or their people whatever they just want to hear instead of telling them the truth and that's one of the main things that uh stands out with the men of the lord the ones who's teaching this truth within uh, truth and sincerity, we bring out the hundred percent truth. Whatever the Bible says, that's how we bring it out, man. We don't make up things on the go. We don't add. We don't subtract. We bring it out exactly the way that is written. All right. A lot of people love to just say, you know, they love to follow their own hearts and do whatever they want to do. But the scriptures say our heart is deceitful. All right. So at the end of the day, this is what these pastors do because they want to get paid. And, you know, they want to keep people astray because if they were to actually follow what's written in these scriptures, they wouldn't go to these pastors anymore, man. They would know to leave them alone because these churches are uh, harlot houses, according to the scriptures. All right. Let's continue. And I'm going to start at one, hopefully quickly. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come into the marriage. The food is spoiling. It's sitting there already killed. It's ready. And they The kingdom will never spoil you. <laughs> the kingdom will never spoil you. I know what he I know what he's trying to say, but the kingdom will never spoil you, you know? Everything is prepared. Yeah, it's prepared for the elect, all right? And only the elect of Israel, not the whole world. All right, the hundred and forty-four thousand men, and then the one third that comes from with that's uh that's going to be the one third of the women and uh, children and other men that believed in the Lord. All right, that's it. Let's continue. 
made light of it and they went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. They are going to their business, their farm, which is how they lived, you know, this was their life. They're not making excuses to go, oh, I've got this party or I've got that party or no, they're going to a farm and a business. And the remnant. No, when you read that scripture, it, it, is, it means exactly what it is. You know, they are. They're going about their business. You know, they're going to do whatever they were doing in the world, whether it's partying, whether it's uh, them being devoted to their career. Whatever the case may be, that's keeping them distracted from following the ways of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You know, they're not prepared for the kingdom, man, and they don't want the kingdom. They want their success here. All right. So that's why it says in the scripture with the ones that she's reading right now, it says they took the, the word lightly, meaning they didn't take it seriously. All right. So, yeah, you know, the farmers and all of them, you know, it represents the uh, two thirds and it represents the people that didn't want to, you know, listen to this, man. They went back. And did according to their business, man. All right. So let's uh let's continue to read. I mean, <laughs> not continue to read. Let's continue to watch. I gotta put these on. The remnant took his servants and entreated them. Sorry, it's Wendy. And entreated them spitefully and killed them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies. He destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden, invited, were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and they gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came to see those guests, he saw there a man which did not have on a wedding garment. And he said to him, friend, how did you come in here not having on a wedding garment? And the man was speechless. But this is the terrifying thing. Look what the king does. And the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot. Take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Okay, so he didn't have on a wedding garment, and that got him kicked out, tied up, kicked out, and killed. Now we're going to go to Revelation 3. Uh, and he's talking to the church of Sardis in this one, so we're going to skip down to verse 4. But you have a few things, a few, I'm sorry, a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me and white for they are worthy he that overcomes the same shall be clothed in white clothing white raiment and I will not blot out his name before my father and before his angels he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches so you see this white clothing what do you think that is that's purity that's purity of God, purity of walking with God. It's not just purity as the world would see it. It's purity not even as your church sees it or as some pastor or some people have told you it's what God says. Saints, if you're not in God's word and you're seeking other people, you're already lost. <laughs> if you're not in God's word to know what this word says, because I'll tell you, his saints and his elect are being pulled out of this world. We're already going hungry. We are already don't have a place to live. We're already losing everything. It's being peeled away even before the mark of the beast fully gets here. These are his, his warnings. He bid you. That doesn't mean anything. But because you tried to enter in without white clothing, without purity, without getting rid of all of these sins, and there's so many other warnings like this, you will be kicked out and you will be cast into fire. That's hell. And so this is the the little verses that I'm supposed to be sharing. And there are small parts, but that he has told me, make these videos and warn them and warn them. And there's several that I need to go through. Um, but please bear with me because all I have is my cell phone. 
and um, we, we live on a prayer daily. So um, heed the warning. See if this is you. Do you have on the white clothing? Or have you been trying to fake it? Did you somehow get into the wedding feast without a wedding garment? Maranatha. <laughs> Maranatha. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, you, when you listen to it and everything like that, you know, like I said, she got some key points, but this ain't got it all, you know, and it's not for her anyway. She might be a Jake, you never know, but at the end of the day right now, she looks like an Edomite, so she's not going to make it. And if she really believed in that purity thing, she would do exactly this. Let's let's start off with this, man. Let's start off with Acts. First, you know, you know what? Let's start off with First Timothy, because this is one of the things that uh, people don't do, which is, first of all, they don't read. You know, they just go to key scriptures that they feel like is necessary, and then they uh they live off of that. They don't go into the whole book, man. If she really believed in this whole Bible, she wouldn't even be making videos. All right, this is First Timothy two and eight. It says, "I would therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, and like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array." But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So that's one cut right there. Whenever you learn this word, you're not even supposed to speak. Okay? You're not supposed to speak. When a, when a woman is in church or whatever, you know, and she's around the men of the Lord, and the men of the Lord is bringing out the word, and she's around, she's not supposed to say anything the whole time until it's over. And then you, she's supposed to learn from her husband at home. Okay, it says, verse 12, it says, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So at the end of the day, what was she doing? She was teaching the scriptures. But that's not her role, man. If she really believed in that word purity, you know, when you go into it, it means to be cleansed, you know, and everything like that. And that's what the elect is going to be. They're going to be cleansed from their sins, of course. But right now, she's not going to make it. You know, like I said, she looks like an Edomite. She might be an Edomite, you know. But at the end of the day, it's through the spirit whether she's a Jake or not. But right now, if she really wanted to believe that she could be part of the elect, you know, for the elect women, you know, she's going off. You're not supposed to you're not supposed to teach at all. At all, man. You're supposed to learn this word from your husband at home, and that's it. No nothing more, you know. She's talking about the Lord gave her visions to bring out this word, but hey, no. The Lord doesn't, you know, the Lord can give you certain dreams and visions and everything like that. And you can tell your husband or your family members or something about it and everything like that. But he uh, he doesn't want a woman to go out there and uh, teach this word, to bring out his word. He uses his men to do that. All right. This is Matthew 24 and 24. It says, for there shall arise false, false uh, Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect now she was speaking about how maybe some of the deceived could be part of the elect but right here it says that they shall deceive if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect the elect are not going to be deceived by the ways of this world man through the power of yahweh by shum yahweh shai the elect will not be deceived with the ways of this world they're going to see the madness that's going on, they're going to see the wickedness that's going on, and they're going to stay separated from it all the way until Yahweh Shai comes back. Point blank, period, man. All right? So at the end of the day, this is what it is. Let's get Psalms 81 and 10. This is Psalms 81 and 10, and it says, I am the Lord thy power, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up into their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened to me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord shall should have submitted themselves unto them, but their time should be should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest in the wheat. And with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. So at the end of the at the end of the day, man, you know, if uh you know if 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 Israel speaking to you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, if you just stop following your own hearts and everything like that and went and actually followed the correct ways of these scriptures, 
he would have filled you up with what? That breath, that water, that way of life, which is the knowledge and understanding of these scriptures and the correct way to live. All right. But since you didn't do that, you're going to be turned and subduing it to your enemies, man. All right. And that is what it is, man. You can't walk into your own lust, you know, and everything like that. You can't do what you want to do, man. It is what it is. Um, let's get um, Matthew, Matthew 10 and 5. This is Matthew 10 and 5. And it says, These twelve Yahweh Shah sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So like I said, she's bringing out this word and everything like that. She was saying how, uh, you know, a lot of people believe they're going to be part of the rapture, but the rapture, they don't even understand what really the rapture is. The Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, you're going to come back with the angels. When you read Wisdom of Solomon, Wisdom of Solomon, Salakia chapter 5, it speaks about the strangeness of their salvation, meaning he's going to come with these UFOs, which are the chariots, and he's going to beam up the elect. And it's only going to be from Negroes, Latinos, or Native Americans. That's it. The elect of those people. Nobody else, man. Nobody else. All right. Like I said, she was going off in the video in the first place, you know. If you really was a, a, a woman of the Lord, you would have your hair covered. And you, like I said, you wouldn't be bringing out videos at all. But we all know <laughs> Esau ain't going to understand this word. You know, Esau has that fake spirit upon him thinking that, you know, he can do uh, whatever he wants to do or believe in whatever he want to believe. And he can read these scriptures and find a way to twist and turn it so he could put himself within this and be like, no, we can make it. But that's not the case, man. It's everywhere. All right. It's everywhere. This is only for the nation of Israel only. That's it. That's it. Yahweh Shah said, go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He does not care about any other nation, man. So that's another thing that she needs to understand. Now, she was reading that uh, parable about the wedding feast. And she brung up the um uh the highways and the byways. You know, so you're like, go out to the highways and the byways to find as many that would be ready for the wedding. Which is the elect coming, being saved by the power of, Yah of Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shah, right? And uh, they're they're preparing themselves for the kingdom. And that's what what we're doing now. Okay, this is uh, Proverbs, not twenty and one, <laughs> not twenty and one. <laughs> I get meant to get Proverbs one and twenty. This is Proverbs one and twenty, and it says, "Wisdom crieth without; she uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city. She uttereth her words, saying." How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. So at the end of the day, this wisdom is only going to be found, what, within the streets, the highways, and the byways? You see the men out here going going out and doing the work of the Lord in the streets in front of everybody, man, where you see everybody, you interact with everybody. And then, of course, you can find the word on YouTube because, you know, we're trying to bring out this word as much as possible because we know at any day now, you know, things can uh, get real out here, man. And then the word won't be able to be found anymore, man. It's going to be too late. So around the clock, 24-7, uploading videos, left and right, left and right, left and right, giving you the warning, giving you the understanding so you can come back to the ways of Yahweh about Shemmy, I was shot. But if you don't want to hearken to this word and listen to, listen to the videos or, you know, meet the brothers out in the streets where the wisdom is, that's on you. That's on you, man. And at the end of the day, we're not going to feel sorry for you. We're not going to feel sorry for you at all. Because even the most I said, he was going to laugh at two thirds of his own people. This is Isaiah chapter 30, verse um, 8. It says, now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, would say to the seers, See not unto the prophets, prophesy not us, uh, write unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. So she was saying in a video how these pastors just love to just, you know, just tell you what it, whatever you want to hear so you can feel good about yourself. Because that's all it is, man. It's just a big, big ass pimp house, really. <laughs> you know, you go to these churches or whatever. You go to the pastor, you, you tell him the wickedness that you did, and all he say is, it's okay, we all make mistakes, yada, 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 yada. 
uh, you are you are forgiven go ahead and get dumped in the holy water or just pray on it you'll be okay and you know all, that's all you got to do and then you could go go ahead and continue to do whatever you was doing as soon as you leave that church man it is what it is and people love to hear that because that's the easy way out that's the easy way out. But the scriptures speak about the straight gate and the scriptures, the scriptures speak about the broad gate. All right. We supposed to walk through the straight gate, the one that's not easy to go through. All right. It's not easy to, you know, be like, yeah, you know, I'm going to follow these commandments, statutes and laws to my best abilities every day. This is a real troublesome thing for certain Israelites out there. You know, a lot of our people cannot do this, man. Like I said, you tell them one thing, you know, I ran into a whole lot of people who tell them that you can't eat pork. They, they, they flip out, man. They flip out. They'd be like, man, hold on. You trying to tell me I can't have pepperoni. I can't have my ham sandwiches. I can't have my sausages and bacon in the morning. I don't know if I could do that, brother. I don't know if I could do that. I need my pork, man. I'd be like, it's just a piece of food, man. You got all these other different meats that you can eat, you know, that's lawful. And you can make it the same way as pork. You don't have to eat pork bacon. You can get beef bacon. I found chicken bacon, man. You can get chicken bacon, and it tastes better than the pork. All right? You know, you can get beef sausage, turkey sausage. You know, if you really want to go all out, go to one of these great meat shops or whatever, you can find lamb sausage. You can find elk sausage. You know, things that you can actually eat, man. I'm like, it's all kind of fish and everything out there for you to eat. But a lot of our people just don't want to follow the ways of the Lord, man. They're hard-headed. They're stubborn. They're wicked. They want to follow their own hearts. They want to do whatever they want to do. So at the end of the day, guess what? Most are not going to deal with you, man. So at the end of the day, this is what they want. They want them. They want their pastors to tell them false things, smooth things, deceits, lies. This is what they get off on, man. They love to hear that, man. That way they can go home and not feel so bad because they look at the pastor as a person who has wisdom and understanding, but he doesn't. He doesn't, man. So at the end of the day, <laughs> they're going to be destroyed, man. And like I said, that lady in that video, she was hitting, she had a couple of points, you know, but, you know, of course she's off. Of course she's off because she don't even know what the elect is, man. She don't know who the elect is. You know, if anything, she should be afraid of the elect, especially if she's an Edomite, because one of the elect sees her <laughs> and they realize that she her bloodline goes back to the nation of Edom. It's a wrap for her, man. And then she should all also be afraid, too, because if she really believed in this word, and she found out that she prob probably is an Edomite. She should be afraid, man. She shouldn't be bringing out videos <laughs> talking about, you know, the elect and everything like that. She should be bringing out videos warning her people. <laughs> like, man, we about to go into slavery. It's about to be a wrap for us. But at the end of the day, like I said, she might be a Jake. You never know. But she should be um pretty terrified right now. You know, she should be, if she really believed, if she really believed, she would do this right here. This is Acts 3 and 17. And it says, and now, brethren, I want that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. But those things with the most High before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Hamashiach and Hawashiach should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Here's the point. Repent ye therefore, repent ye therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Okay? So this is how you become possibly one of the elect, man. This is how you become an elect lady. This is how you possibly could be one of the 144,000. This is possibly how you could be part of the one third of the elect. You have to repent and be converted. What does it mean to be converted? It means to change your ways. Believe actually in what's written in these scriptures. Not just going and saying I repented and then you still live the same life that you was doing or you make a couple of minor changes that you think is beneficial for you. You know, you like, yeah, I'm a good person. I, you know, I help people out. I give homeless people money, you know, saying I work overtime, you know, I always make sure I make time for people when they need to talk or whatever. No, that's not loving. How about Shimmy? I was shy, man. When you read first John five and three, it says loving God is following his commandments. This is how you be converted, man. You start following those commandments, statutes and laws. All right. And like I said, if she really believed in the, in the words of these scriptures, man, she would stop bringing out videos because it's unlawful for her, it's an un, it's unlawful for her to do so. Salakia, all right? She's supposed to change her ways and she really believed that she's an Israelite. 
She will stop uploading videos. She will change her attire. She will present that in front of the people and not care about what people have to think about her. And then she will just keep it moving. And then, you know, she'll, she, she, she would follow the, you know, the laws and then ever and eventually try to find her a husband that would teach her the correct way. All right. But like I said, from the way it looked, I, I believe she might be an Edomite, but you know, it's all through the spirit we'll see in the future. But at the end of the day, for you real Israelites, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, this is what you need to do in order to be part of the elect. You got to repent and be converted. Pray and, fra and fast to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai so he could put the spirit on you and um, to follow this book the correct way. And then after that, man, you keep working on it daily, every day, every single day. You know, you got to put that fear upon you of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. If you don't fear the Lord, you're not going to. You're not going to believe, man. Point blank, period. Is this going to be a wrap? Because you need the fear in order for you to move forward. That's it. If you don't have the fear, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it because you're going to keep doing what you want to do because you're not afraid anything can happen to you. You think just because of what you're doing is going to get you out of whatever situation, but that's not the case. So it is what it is. So I just want to bring out that one video. Like I said, it popped up on my YouTube feed. And everything like that and i was just like you know what I'll, I'll do a little video off of this or whatever because um i just wanted to see what she was talking about and like i said you know what right let me get that right quick i'm glad i said that because uh in her description it went to a whole nother video uh hold on, hold on salakia let me uh whack ass ad but um <laughs> in her description right here it says, we have been given many warnings in scripture. This little series are the warnings of God wants you to hear before it's too late. Will you heed and obey or, and obey, or will you keep walking on a narrow path? <laughs> hey, I just said you got to walk through the straight gate. Hey, but you know, a parable in Matthew and his corresponding verse in Revelation about being known, being no cord out of the wedding feast. Many think they will make it because once they were invited, your invitation amounts to very little. Here's the first warning from Jesus. I was told to share the mark of the beast is here. I will do everything I could do. I can to do these daily. God help us. Maranatha. I guess that's what <laughs> Maranatha. That's what she said at the end of the video. But, uh, you know, the mark of the beast is not here. We hear about it. We see that is 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 developing. And it's going to be here sooner or later, but it's not here yet. You know, you got to understand what the mark of the beast is. All right. We already know what it is. All right. We already know it's the chip, you know, but I'm not going to get into that. You know, um, at the end of the day, like I said, she just don't know what it is. And, you know, and that's fine. You know, like I said, because she might be an Edomite. It's not for her. But like I said, if she's a Jake, she will... Uh, you know try to look for the real truth but it is what it is man but like i said i didn't want to make this too long i just want to bring this out and everything like that because uh like uh like i said you know this is pretty interesting to me it's, it's always interesting looking at christians or whoever try to you know talk about the scriptures and they have no understanding about what it's talking about at all so it is what it is man so hey i hope this was edifying so with that i'm gonna say call halayim yahweh bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakan Kwadash, double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is true from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Akwath that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratazah, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, y'all, Sarala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.